we're here at DevOps Belgium, and I'm talking to Barrett Anderson, who's giving a keynote tomorrow about weaponized, weaponized AI. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly difficult thing to say, apparently. Um, so we've seen a really interesting trend. It's interesting in, in a terrible, terrible way, mm -hmm. with propaganda on the internet and elections recently. Um, how does that tie in with your talk? Yeah, so I first started researching um, the technological underpinnings of computational propaganda uh, after the US election um, last year. Um, and it's really, uh, so my talk tomorrow will be all about that, but, but also about some of the importance of understanding the political and economic uh, machines that are really driving the future of technology and the internet. Um, because as, as developers and, and technical talent, it's, you don't often get to see that bigger scale picture or, or think about the bigger scale picture as much, but it's so important to understand how the tools that you're, how the tools that you're building will fit into that, to that picture um, and also what future implications they might have, right? So Facebook, for example, started in a college dorm room as a tool, originally a kind of like a hot or not tool, right? Yeah. Um, and, and look where it is today because, because of the uh, incentives of, of the economy in which it was built, it's really become this advertising focused uh, business model. Um, and their drive to increase and, and um, increase revenue and, and to optimize revenue has really put them in, in the position that they are today, where you know, they're actually incentivized not to remove specific users because it actually adds to their monthly active user number. It adds to what they can sell advertising. Um, and so that kind of cross of incentives where the customers are actually not the users, the customers are the advertisers. Uh, and yet the customers are the ones whose data is being sold, right? Um, it, it creates just, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, you know, mixed, mixed incentives generally, and um, it can have some really, really negative outcomes. So when we're using tools like Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. what we need to be conscious of as users then is that we're not in control of, of we're not the purpose of the platform. We're not the main focus of the platform. Yeah, so, 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 so Facebook and Twitter and Instagram um, are, are really the outcome of, I would say, is one of the key core economic drivers of the internet, which is Silicon Valley. Um, and so in, in their case, right, the, you have to keep in mind that the, sh the shareholders in Silicon Valley are investors, right? So um, as a CEO of, a comp of one of those companies, you actually have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize profits for your shareholders every quarter. Um, and what that means is that for companies themselves, you often take a much shorter term um, approach to value for the company rather than focusing on the long-term implications. Um, and so, I mean, what you've seen in Silicon Valley is that in the last 10 years, uh, they've spent you know, all of their time focusing on uh, building monopoly business models, the bigger the better, um, and then also uh, essentially building in digital addiction. So they're making their products as attractive as possible and as, um, as uh, what, sorry, what is the right word for this? Th they're essentially building products where you feel really good using them. So every time you get a like on Instagram or a like on Facebook, it's like a little serotonin squirt in your brain goes off. Um, and that's been a very deliberate, uh, deliberate approach to making products more and more and more addictive so that users come back over and over and over again because that allows them to sell more and more advertising, they can be more effective, as far as targeting users. Um, and then, and so that's kind of one, one core of that. The other core um, economic driver of the internet and technology generally is China. And China is interesting because they take a very different approach. So whereas companies in Silicon Valley, um, the, the investors or the um, stock owners are actually really the shareholders. In China, the shareholders are national interest. Uh, so the Chinese Communist Party. Um, and what that means is that they've taken this very deliberate approach to um, they're not maximizing profit, they're actually maximizing China's eventual uh, national uh, uh, stature in stand and standing in the world and ability to compete on a, on a national and global level. Um, and so you've seen a couple of different approaches to that, but a lot of their, a lot of their co companies and platforms in China are really dedicated and focused on surveillance, so watching over uh, the Chinese people and making sure that they can control them. They can, um, it's kind of like a panopticon type uh, scenario where 
um, they have a system called Sesame Credit, right? And Sesame Credit is a credit rating system, but it's based on your, your social profiles, your private chats and conversations, what you purchase online, wow. um, and all of those are, are, you know, all of that information comes together to inform both your credit score um, and your ability to travel within the country, so like domestically or internationally. Um, and what that means is that people are self-censoring, right? Because, uh, for example, um, it's a system that right now is voluntary, but it's supposed to, it will be mandatory by 2020. Um, there was a there was a fellow recently in China who had been um, in his private WeChat messages had been uh, talking referred to uh, President Xi Jinping as steamed bun Xi. He was put in uh, jail for I believe it was two years, just as a result of that, um, and his lawyer was disbarred just for representing him. So you can see that like that very different approach to, because there is this focus on um, global domination, for lack of a better word, or owning the future of the internet and owning the future of technology, um, has a much different, and, a, and I would say much more chilling effect on uh, the product itself. So, so it's very interesting, because I suppose we're talking about two different outcomes of the digitalization of the self. Mm -hmm. So one of them is very economic, in Silicon Valley, and the other one has terrifying social consequences as well as economic consequences. So what's our responsibility as developers in all of this? So I think the most important thing is really focusing on just, just having an awareness of like w what are the ways in which international political order is moving and changing. And the developer community generally is known you know, for being a little bit less socially uh, uh, you know, a little more socially awkward, so to speak, right? And I think a lot of people become developers because they, they don't really like interacting with other people that much. Um, I'm, I'm an introvert, personally, so I totally understand that. Um, but we have come to a time in, in the world where, globally speaking, political alliances are changing extremely quickly. Um, your company could be, you know, you could be building something right now where um, a Chinese-backed firm has invested in your company, and in five to 10 years, it could be owned by the Chinese government, in fact. Or they could be you know, trying to kind of infiltrate and, and steal your IP so that they can undercut your company um, and sell a cheaper version of that. And so I think it's, just, it's super important to understand like, what are the economic drivers that will affect the product that you're building, um, particularly in the consumer industry, um, but also in, in, the, in the B2B space. So we need to have an awareness of our responsibility as individuals in the wider, the wider system. Yeah, and, and actually it's, it's um, you know, so I think a lot of people are, are kind of hesitant to stand up for um, what they see as broader strategic goals at their company. It's, it's kind of scary, right? It's like, what if I lose my job? What if I'm seen as just being a problem? Um, Twitter, interesting story about Twitter. So they had, uh, uh, it just came out in the news uh, two days ago, right? So they've been uh, under a ton of scrutiny from Congress and the United States um, based on their lack of a just, just general um, lack of taking, I think, the computational propaganda problem seriously. So um, there was an allegation uh, from the head of an editor at RT, the Russian uh, news site, Russian propaganda site, that Twitter actually pitched them on um, spending a, a lot of money on the US election for ads. Right, so that's interesting. It, it has not been confirmed by Twitter, but it's an, alle it's an allegation. Um, but what did surface just yesterday was that this whole problem of fake accounts and bots uh, operating fake accounts to sway political opinion within, within, you know, which has happened in the US particularly, and it's under a lot of scrutiny right now, but it's also happening all across Europe. Um, so the strategy generally is to like, look at different cultural rifts and then use, use these bots or propaganda accounts to separate and drive wedges in between groups of people uh, and create more kind of cultural friction within countries, and particularly countries that have been exemplars of Western democracy. Um, so, and in Twitter's case, they actually had one employee who, who, you know, raised the alarm about this happening kind of early on. He was the only black engineer on their team. Um, and he was actually fired in a subsequent round of, of um, firing. So, so it's int it's he was not fired, I should say, he was not fired be because of that, as far as I know. Um, but, but I think com he was fired. companies have, uh, like, 
have generally kind of ignored some of this stuff. And I think we're coming to a time where we're going to see them start to st stand up and take more notice, um, particularly as these like, top Facebook, Google, Twitter um, have come under much closer scrutiny uh, from a governmental perspective. It's going to become more and more important for them to, to really start doing some of that strategic foresight work themselves and, and to start thinking about how will this platform be used for good or for bad, and how can we uh, do the work ahead of time and listen to our team and our, and our developers especially um, to anticipate that and, and to make necessary moves to avoid it in the future. Thank you very much.